Well, g'day and welcome to the channel. In today's video, I wanna explain exactly what causes noise in your images, how you can reduce the amount of noise, and talk about the misconception that ISO actually causes noise. And be sure to stay to the end of the video where I explain how I took this shot of a superb fairy wren on a 13-year-old camera at its max ISO and still get an image that looks this good. So we all know what noise is. We've all had numerous images ruined by excess noise. Fundamentally, the noise is caused by a lack of light hitting the sensor of your camera. For example, this female scarlet robin, I starved the sensor of light and as a result, we got this image which is extremely noisy. Now if I give that sensor lots of light that it loves, we now remove the noise and we get an image that looks like this. The only difference, one, we starved the sensor of light, the second one, we gave it heaps of light. It really is that simple. The more light your sensor gets, the less noise your image will have. First, I wanna quickly address the misconception that your ISO directly causes noise in your images. This isn't true, it's the lack of light that is causing the noise. And I can demonstrate this. I've got two images side by side. As you can see, one has a lot of noise. It's very noisy, the quality is terrible. Would it surprise you if I told you they both had exactly the same ISO number, the same settings, exactly the same, and they do. So why are they different? Well, it's because one of them, the one that doesn't have any noise, was taken in direct sunlight, so we had plenty of light, the sensor was very happy, the other one was taken before the sun came up in very low light, therefore the sensor was starved of light, it introduced a lot of noise. Now the actual raw image, as you can see, is very dark because we just didn't get enough light. The exposure settings that I dialed in didn't enable enough light hitting the sensor, therefore we've had to amplify the light, introducing noise. So the actual process of brightening the image is a little bit complicated, I don't fully understand it, but basically what the camera sensor is doing is amplifying the light or the gain to make that image brighter. The amount that it amplifies the light is actually determined by your ISO setting. The higher your ISO setting, the more the camera has to amplify the light. So your ISO does not change your exposure in any way. It's not letting in any more light. All it's doing is telling the camera to amplify the light that it has even more. So it sounds pretty easy to fix, just simply give your sensor more light. And this is true. If we shot at ISO 100 and we had loads and loads of light, like in this landscape shot, I would have very little noise in the image. This was actually taken at one two thousandth of a second, so very, very fast, but because we had so much light, there's very little noise. But if you're a wildlife photographer, you know we do not always have these conditions. We don't always have lots and lots of light. We often shoot in rainforests, overcast conditions. But the issue with using your base ISO is you often have to use very slow shutter speeds depending on the light. And that just simply doesn't work with wildlife photography. We have to use high shutter speeds to freeze the action. For example, I took this shot of all these herons and I actually used a very fast shutter speed of 1 3200th of a second. There's no way I could use ISO 100 at such a high shutter speed and I actually did have a fair bit of light in the scene and I used ISO 400 and we often take shots in less than perfect light as I mentioned in a rainforest. I took a photo of this pink robin. We didn't have a lot of light so I had a choice to make. Do I have really, really low shutter speeds, risk motion blur or do I increase the shutter speed a little bit and increase the noise a little bit? I obviously went that way ended up with this photo which I'm very happy with and that's ultimately what we have to do as photographers is just make that choice. Now before I go any further I want to just recap how our sensor gets light because the more light it gets the less noise we're going to have so it's important we understand exactly how we can give our sensor as much light as possible whilst maintaining those nice shots and we do it in three ways your aperture, your shutter speed and the strength of the light itself. That will dictate how much light is hitting our sensor. Okay, let's take a look at aperture first. Remember, aperture relates to the opening at the front of the lens, which allows light to travel through and hit our sensor. The lower the max aperture number, so this one here is 6.3, the more light you will let in. Now, a much faster lens would be my 70-200 2 2.8. That 2.8 number is a lot lower than 6.3. A great way to visualize this is imagine you've got a big dark room and you want to add light to the room, you want to make the room brighter. We would have to add a big window. So let's say we add a really big window which is equivalent to 2.8. So that lets in a lot of light. Now the next size up would be my massive 500 f4. So f4 is actually a higher number than 2.8, I know this lens is bigger, but this has actually got an aperture of f4. Now we measure the light in stops of light, and this can be confusing. This is 2.8, this is f4. This is one stop slower than this one. 
stops of light either double the light or half the light. So for example, this one here is F4, it lets in half the light. So imagine our window analogy, if we changed our window to F4, we would actually halve the size of that window. So F2.8 would have a massive window, F4 would have half the size. Now if I go to the next lens, which is here, which is 5.6, so we go 2.8, F4, 5.6. 5.6 is one stop slower than f4. So this here would have a window half the size of this lens and it would actually only be a quarter the size of this lens. So you can see as our aperture number gets bigger, our opening gets smaller, our window gets smaller and the amount of light hitting our sensor gets smaller and smaller. At the end of the day, whatever your max aperture is of the lens that you own dictates how much light will reach your sensor. So the next important factor that determines how much light reaches our sensor is our shutter speed. Now our shutter speed determines how long we let light hit our sensor. Back to our window analogy, just imagine we've got our big window, we've got a dark room and we actually close some curtains. We've got big curtains which blacks out the room. There's no light reaching the room. Now our shutter speed, say we had a one second shutter speed, means we open those curtains for a second, we let all that light in and then we close those curtains again and we create an exposure. Now if we have a really fast shutter speed, say one one thousandth, we're literally opening those curtains for a split second. That obviously lets in a lot less light than the longer shutter speed. So obviously if we have a very fast shutter speed, our sensor is just not getting a lot of light. Now that leads me on to another very important concept, and I know there's been a lot of concepts today, but the actual light has a strength associated to it. Not all light is equal. So light in the middle of the day is very strong, it's very bright. Light in the Lorraine forest is very weak. So the strength of the light will dictate hugely how much light reaches your sensor. Thankfully the strength of the light is actually given a value called a light value. And that value generally ranges from five being very, very dark to say 15, 16 being very, very bright. I've created this chart that you can see where you're likely to get those sort of light values. And the lower the light value number, obviously the higher ISO would have to be to maintain the same shutter speed. Thankfully on our modern cameras, our cameras have meters in them built in to actually measure that light. But it's still important we understand the light value because that directly impacts the shutter speeds that we can use. Now if I go back to Colin the Cockatiel for example, the first shot that I took with direct sunlight had a light value of 14, which enabled me to use an ISO of 100 and a shutter speed of 1 400th of a second. Now when I tried to take that same shot with the same settings with a light value of 9, so it was pre-dawn, where I've obviously got five stops less light. So when I take that shot, the resulting image is extremely dark because it just didn't get enough light. Now if I was to amplify the light by five stops, we get a heap of noise. With the light value of nine, if I wanted to get a correct exposure, I actually need to set a much lower shutter speed, about five stops lower, which would be around 1 13th of a second. So if I use 1 13th of a second, ISO 100, I would end up with a correct exposure. The sensor would be happy. And you can see the images side by side, both exposed correctly with a base ISO, the only difference being the shutter speed because of the different strength of the light at that time. There's a couple of handy links in the description. I will put down how you work out what the light value is based on your exposure. You can put it into this website and it will tell you what the light value is. Whilst the sensor size is important, the actual technology inside the sensor is equally important and it's changed over the years. A modern sensor is far better than a really old sensor. And there's this chart here which I've created using the data from photons to photos. You could see that original 5D camera had a very low rating of 1881, which is very low. Compare that to the modern R5, which is, has a lot more megapixels, but the ISO performance is way, way better at 5435. So if we shot those side by side, the 5D and the R5, the R5 is clearly going to have a lot less noise at the same settings. As you can see on that chart, a few sensors outperform others. A lot of it has to do with the amount of megapixels, technology, etc. The smaller the sensor, generally the more noise it's going to have. But you just need to be careful that if we start cropping our full frame sensors heavily, we're going to lose some of that advantage. So if I took the R5 and cropped out way down to say APS-C level, it's going to lose a lot of that advantage. So it's just another thing to consider. If you crop your images heavily, it's going to make the noise appear a lot bigger and a lot worse. All right, and that brings me on to the final thing I want to talk about today, and it's by far the most important. Do we have to worry about noise with noise reduction software that we have? 
Noise reduction software is absolutely incredible. It's game changing and it's changed the way that I photograph. I'm much more comfortable now using high ISO, high shutter speeds, and I don't even really worry about the noise. Okay, to demonstrate this, I actually went out into the field with my Olympus OM-1 and the 100 to 400. Now the native base ISO of this body is 200. And I've actually taken two images. I took an image at the base ISO of 200, and then I took an image at a much higher ISO. And I'll show the images side by side. And I want you to tell me which image is the better image? Which image do you prefer? I suspect the majority of you went with the right hand side image because it's just a lot sharper. The image on the left is actually a little bit soft. It's lacking critical sharpness. Why is that? Well, the image on the left was the one I actually took at the base ISO of 200. So I let in the most amount of light, but that gave me a shutter speed of 1 40th of a second. And I was shooting handheld and I shake a lot. So I have to use higher shutter speeds. And I took a burst of shots at those settings and I didn't get any sharp photos. So what I decided to do was I decided to set the shutter speed to 1 400th of a second so a much higher shutter speed to reduce any of that motion blur and I actually decided to stop this lens down so the max aperture of this lens is 6.3 however a lot of lenses actually get sharper the more you stop them down so I set the aperture at f8 now I've purposely starved the sensor of light so what was my ISO I actually had to use an ISO of 3200 so I actually had to amplify the light by quite a bit due to my shutter speed and my aperture however that enabled me to take this image and it's superior to the first image even though it has an ISO of 3200 compared to 200. How is this possible? Well, it's due to noise reduction software. I simply ran that through DxO Pure Raw, cleaned that image up, removed a lot of the noise. I made a few tweaks in Lightroom. So the image that had the higher ISO in this case is actually the better image, <laughs> which is just interesting. It goes to show that you don't always have to try and use the slowest shutter speed and the lowest ISO to create good images. I would much rather use a slightly higher shutter speed slightly higher ISO so that I can guarantee to get the shot and get a sharp shot. A sharp shot to me is more important than an image without any noise whatsoever because I can save it later with noise reduction software. I wanted to test it on my really old camera. This is my 40D from 2007. It's a 12 megapixel APS-C sensor. Remember on that chart, it's the worst performing camera that I own and the max ISO of this body, believe it or not, is 1600. 1600 is the max native ISO. They didn't want you to go any higher than that because there'd be just too much noise. And when I was using this back in the day, 400 was probably the max. I didn't really want to go over ISO 400 because I just got too much noise in my images. But I wanted to use this in really low light just to see what sort of images we can get. So in my front yard, the light was really, really low. The light value was around 7.67 which shows you just how little light we had. This lens and camera doesn't have any image stabilization whatsoever. So I've used a tripod. So a tripod will help with my stabilization. This lens is actually reasonably fast at 5.6. So I dialed in an aperture of 5.6, the max aperture. And then I had to put it at the max ISO, which was 1600. So 1600 ISO, aperture of 5.6. Now, what was my shutter speed gonna be? So I've dialed in my shutter speed until I had a correct exposure and the shutter speed was 1 100th of a second, which is extremely slow considering the lack of image stabilization. Generally on this kit, I wanna shoot at 1 400th of a second or higher, but we're hardware limited again. The light is dictating the shutter speed that we can use. I simply can't use a higher shutter speed because I don't have enough light. So I just waited and we had some little fairy wrens jumping around and these birds move quite quickly and I'm shooting in a high frame rate which is pretty slow on this body and you can see in these images we had so much motion blur I just struggled to get any sharp shots but thankfully I did get a few sharp shots. Here's the fairy wren on a side of a rock and it's definitely sharp even at that low shutter speed. Now the original image did have a lot of noise as you would expect due to the old body, the higher ISO for this. However again I actually just used the noise reduction built into Lightroom which is a brand new feature. It cleaned it up extremely well, a few more edits in Lightroom. I am blown away by the quality of this image at the max native ISO of this body. I never dreamed this would be possible years ago, and now it is, it's a reality. We can use our older gear and shoot at higher ISOs and save those images. It's just fantastic. I highly encourage you to download a trial of DxO Pure Raw, Topaz Denoise, and if you use Lightroom, have a go with the new Lightroom built-in noise reduction. I'll leave some links below that you can try it out. This will really change your photography. You really do need noise reduction software 
to get the best out of your images. So the next question is, well, just how high can we push that ISO? On the OM-1, I decided to push it up to 12,800, which is really high for this Micro Four Thirds body. Captured this shot of a Jackie Winter. The original RAW file definitely has quite a bit of noise, but I've run it through noise reduction. And considering the high ISO and the lack of light that we had in that shot, it's come up extremely well. And I'm pretty happy with that. I think ideally I don't want to go much higher than 6400, but it's there as an option. Now you might be looking at my 12,800 original RAW image and going, you don't have a lot of noise there. My images are way noisier than that. And there's a couple of reasons for that. First one is how bright your scene is. This was actually a reasonably bright scene that I shot this in, I think it was LV10, and the background was quite light. So the lighter your background, the less noise it's gonna show. And you can see here when I zoom in a dark part of that image, you can see the noise shows up a lot more than in the bright parts. I suspect if you're getting loads of noise in your images, you're shooting at a much lower LV value, so you're probably in a dark rainforest. Maybe the background's really dark, and maybe you're underexposing your images, because if you're underexposed, it generally shows more noise when you brighten it in post. So to conclude, noise is created by a lack of light, not your ISO. Your camera requires a certain volume of light to expose the photo at the base native ISO. So the strength of the light is measured in that light value. The higher that number, the quicker our sensor is gonna fill up with light. The only way to increase light hitting your sensor is to have a faster aperture to let in more light or a slower shutter speed. Larger sensors capture more light and the type of sensor you have will also dictate how well it amplifies that light. So with noise reduction software, we can clearly use much higher shutter speeds and you have to set what you feel comfortable based on the camera that you have. On my R5, if I was to look at what ISO I mainly use, my most used ISO is actually ISO 1600, followed by ISO 3200, which shows you that I really do favor those higher shutter speeds. Now, when I use my R7, it's actually about a stop lower. So ISO 800 is my most commonly used and then 1600. At the end of the day, I think we obsess a little bit too much about noise and image quality. <laughs> I think we need to focus on capturing the subject, composition, and just getting the image first. We can reduce the noise later. I'd much rather use that higher shutter speed, higher ISO, than stress too much about the noise in the image. I encourage you to get out with your camera, have a play with the different settings, get a firm understanding of how the light is reaching your sensor and what's the best ISO to use in your photography. I hope this was helpful. If you found it helpful, give it that thumbs up. Thanks to all the new members that have joined the channel. If you're not aware, for the price of less than a cup of coffee per month, you can directly support the channel to enable you to make videos just like this one. You get a cool little emoji bird next to your name in the comments, so be sure to jump down to the comments and read those and leave some comments for what we talked about today. What do you find helpful? What noise reduction software are you using? What ISOs are you now using for the camera bodies that you use? We've got a wonderful community and it's well worth visiting that. So until the next video, happy birding, take care, and we'll see you in the next one. See you later.